Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and you with me Arun Sharma and today I am doing an editorial analysis from the Hindu newspaper and the editorial I have chosen for, for you today is what you can see on your screen South Asia's human capital is the resilience it needs so the human capital obviously the capital that you get from the from the human capital obviously the capital that you get from the from the is what they are talking about as the article starts with the shocks that I mean the first two paragraphs of the article are talking about the shocks especially in uh, in South Asia uh, where the shocks were exa exasperated uh, exacerbated uh, due to uh, pandemics economic slums and extreme weather events so what they are saying is that uh, the last few years have ushered in a harsh new reality where crises are the norm rather than the exception. So the crisis induced by pandemics, economic slums and extreme weather events have, which, which normally were used to be events that would space themselves out over a period of time, these kind of uh, shocks. But in the last couple of years, last two, three years, it's actually been, been all happening together, which is what has created a, a huge issue for South Asian population especially. And it continues to say that this is deeply distress, distressing because the knowledge, skills and health that people accumulate their human capital. So here they are defining what the human capital means. The, the meaning of human capital is uh, the accumulation of knowledge, skills and health. Three things, knowledge, skills and health uh, is what is the accumulation of human capital or human capital would mean. So, so it says this is a critical res source of the resilience that countries rely on for, rec for recovery. Basically what, what they are saying here is that when there are shocks, when there are extreme uh, events that happen uh, either economically or, or on the health side or, or whatever or extreme weather events that they have talked about, the resilience that you, that, that you need comes from the human capital that you have and, and it comes from the, from the knowledge, the skills and the health of your, of your population, of, of your people. And if, uh, if you're not investing enough in that, it's going to be an issue for you to bounce back. So to strengthen resilience and protect the well-being of future generations, governments across South Asia need to take urgent policy, policy action and invest in human capital. So this is the article and, and, and an editorial is always an opinion. So there's always a, a recommendation or a, or a point that the author is trying to prove to you and he will always build um, that point on the basis of of structural support points that that he will or or he'll try to strengthen his argument by by giving you facts figures and also arguments which will strengthen what he's trying to say so so yahape he tells you the author tells you in this uh, statement that to strengthen resilience and protect the well-being of future generations governments across south asia, asia need to take urgent policy action and invest in human capital. So he's already told you what his opinion is. Uh, and, and the rest of the article is actually uh, going ahead with, with the reasons. He's trying to support that reason. So if you're preparing for any exam, uh, any descriptive exam like IES or anything, then in that case, you, you have to understand good quality writing, good quality, uh, uh, good quality descriptive writing is always about argumentative writing where you you try to copy stuff or copy the, the argument structure that these kind of authors pick up. So anyway, let's come back to this. And even, even in, your, in, in a normal one-to-one uh, -one conversation, you are, you are in an important conversation, an interview or with your bosses, etc. The ability to build arguments is a very important structure. So, so no, don't only understand uh, the, uh, the, the, the article uh, that I'm talking about here but also understand the structuring of arguments. The more better you become in terms of your arguments, the more you will be able to succeed in whatever you're doing in life, not just in competitive exams. So he moves ahead. Why is he saying that we should invest more in human capital? He, he makes that point by talking about, about uh, uh, the, the, the human, the population or, or the uh, population in Southeast Asia as an underutilized asset. So he's given the reason why he's saying that. So South Asia's people are its biggest asset, but remain wastefully underutilized. So they're not utilized well. And then he's giving examples why. Nearly half its population under the age of, with nearly half its population under the age of 24 and over 1 million young people set to enter the labor force 
every month until 2030, the region could reap an invariably high demographic dividend. So you need to understand what demographic dividend is and for your benefit I have opened uh, the meaning of demographic dividend here. Demographic dividend refers to the growth in an economy that is a result of a change in the age structure of a country's population. So remember that demographic dividend, a lot of people misinterpret demogra or, or misknow uh, demographic di dividend as just as the, as, as the dividend that comes out of a large population. It's not just that. Please remember this, the demographic dividend is the, the, the growth of an economy. It refers to the growth, is the dividend that you get uh, through the growth in the economy that is a result of change in the age structure of a country's population. So when the population becomes more and more younger, there's a lot of demographic dividend that you have because you get productive people versus the population which is, which is older. So you know that story from what, what happened to, to countries like Japan, etc. So, so where, where populations or even, even some countries in Europe, where populations have become uh, older as, as the rate of uh, growth of population has, has slowed down. So he talks about this. So the, the, the region could reap an enviably high demographic, demographic dividend. He's talking about this, this as an opportunity. But South Asia is also home to over. So, so he's now giving you a qualifier point. While the dividend is, is there to be taken, there's going to be that aged, uh, the dem demographic dividend which is available as an opportunity. But the problem is, South Asia is also home to over one third of the world's stunted children. And, and, and a child born in the region today can, by the age of 18, expect to attain only 48% of their full productive potential. If the quantity, I don't know where he's getting this, this number from, but if the quantity and quality of South Asia's human capital were to improve, regional GDP per worker could double. So this is the opportunity that he's talking about, that you can have a doubling of regional uh, GDP per worker. So these numbers are jarring, but will be hard to shift without more resources. Which numbers? The, the negative part that he's talking about. South Asian governments on average spend just 1% of GDP on health and 2.5% on GDP on education. So this is information for you that you should keep in your mind. This is the spending, current spending of South Asian. When we are talking about South Asia, we're talking not just about India, we're talking about all the countries in the South Asian uh, continent. Uh, uh, so, so all our neighbor countries are included in this. So the average spending is just 1% on, on, on human resources. Uh, on, on health is just 1% of GDP. And education is just 2.5% on GDP. And the global average, 5.9% on health. So we are just spending one sixth of that. Uh, on a uh, on a per uh, uh, <coughs> per capita basis in in a lot of ways this will this will kind of uh, become even even worse if you talk about a large population on which only you are spending only one percent of GDP versus a small population on which you are spending six percent of GDP so this is a very a very big uh, uh, imbalance and we spend uh, the world spends three point seven percent of GDP on education so this is what uh, uh, this is talking about here and uh, so this is this is the problem and then uh, he he goes on to say against this background the covid-19 pandemic which pushed an additional 35 million so covid-19 pandemic created a lot of problems obviously we all know that but but it lost it it created something uh, there's an important word here again which you should know in this in this uh, paragraph uh, the word being used here is learning poverty so amongst the worst, most woeful impacts is the rise in learning poverty. So what is learning poverty? I mean, this is again a word which is, which you should know. So the, the meaning of learning poverty is learning poverty is a term that refers to the inability of individuals to acquire the necessary skills and knowledge to participate fully in society. So this can be due to a lack of access to quality education, limited resources or other factors. So the learning poverty, it's, it's two, two words or two concepts merged together, learning and poverty. That means you, are, you, have got, you, got, you got poor in your learning, is referring to a term that is inability of individuals to acquire necessary skills and knowledge. So that means you are an individual and you are in a, unable to acquire necessary skills and knowledge to participate fully in society. And why could this happen? Because you don't have access to quality education. You have, you have limited resources or there can be other factors like, like COVID created that. 
So, so this is what uh, so so uh, the learning poverty. He is giving the example of learning poverty in South Asia by saying that while in other regions schools close for 145, 141 days uh, between 2010, 20, and 22, in South Asia it was closed for 225 days. And he is then giving this example that uh, says coupled with ineffectively ineffective remote instruction. With this increase, so in, in, in South Asia, because of digital uh, 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 non-connectivity and other, other issues, the, the large population, you know, you know what, what uh, he's talking about here, the large population and, the, and the, uh, the underprivileged, or not just the underprivileged, even the lower middle class kind of population and their, and their children uh, not having access to, to, a, to a good uh, quality digital uh, resource or a digital uh, device. Uh, would have uh, reduced the quality of the instruction. So ineffective remote instruction, this increased South Asia's learning poverty from 60% to 78%. So the poorest and most vulnerable people fell further behind. So, so this is talking about, uh, about how the learning poverty was, uh, uh, was something which South Asia experienced much more than, than other regions. And even within, within South Asia, Poorer people experiences much more, poorer regions experiences much more than, than, uh, than, than the richer ones or than the economically well-off ones. So intervention, so the, he, star, he ends up with, with interventions that can make a difference. So while the outlook is grim, it is important to remember that well-designed and implemented interventions can make a difference in governments if governments act fast. So he's talking about two things here. He's talking about well-designed and imp implemented so you have to not just design good quality that's common sense actually you don't not only have to design good quality interventions but also implement them and if you can implement them fast then it can make a difference and he's giving a couple of examples here uh, that even so simple and low-cost education programs can lead to sizable gains in skills so he's not he's saying that you really don't need much money and much investment to do this He's giving these two examples of Bangladesh and Tamil Nadu. In Bangladesh, attending a year of additional preschool through two-hour sessions significantly improved literacy, numeracy, and social development scores. Meanwhile, in Tamil Nadu, six months of extra remedial classes after school help students catch up on about two-thirds of lost learning, linked to 18 months of clo school closures. And in Nepal, so he's giving a third example, government teachers ran a phone program phone tutoring program that helped increase students' foundational numeracy by 30%. So given the high returns to human capital, the huge losses inflicted by the pandemic and the region's vulnerability to, to a variety of shocks. So three things he's talking about. He's talking about the positive thing, that the high returns on human capital. Second, huge losses by the pandemic. And the third reason, so, so three reasons he's talking about, high returns. Pandemic losses, huge losses due to the pandemic. And the third reason he's talking about the vulnerability to shocks. So even with constrained government budgets, scaling up these interventions should be a no-brainer. So we should not be thinking too much about, about screening, scaling up these kind of interventions because of these three reasons. What are the reasons again? High returns on human capital, huge losses inflicted by the pandemic and regions vulnerability to a variety of shocks. So you see how, how the structure of the argument is built here. And you learn, learn that also. Don't, don't just take in these editorials from the point of view of learning the issue, but also take it from the point of view of understanding how to, how to structure an argument, whether you're writing it in a descriptive answer or speaking it in a, in a conversation. Globally, countries that have systems in place to support individuals and families before a crisis strikes can better protect, protect their citizens during the crisis. So, so he's saying that you should not react to crisis, but you should actually do it before the crisis strikes so that you are in a better position to manage the crisis. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Do, do, do give me feedback about this and I, will be, I would love to do more of this as we keep going. There are a couple of articles for me here. Uh, one on Ajay Banga, the other on saving rainforests from The Economist, which I'll be doing. Uh, 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 live on the read and learn series so do also follow that series and i'm also coming up with some uh, solving series uh, maths quantitative aptitude solving series for csat and other exams past exams cat cat csat 
and other exams ke papers I'll be solving, even placement papers I'll be solving for you here. So do do follow the channel and do subscribe to the channel and I look forward to, to seeing you again in the next video. Bye-bye.